Hello, everyone. In this session, we'll be walking through how to work with strings in Python. And as an introduction, just working with strings is, uh, is a fundamental element of most programming languages. And in our case, we'll be using it to create, uh, uh, to print out uh, comments with our answers. And then later in the semester, we'll work on a project where we read in a lot of different files. And then each of the files has a different uh, name and we'll use strings manipulate the strings to read in the files all at one time, uh, one after another. So those are some of the use cases which will use strings. It'll be become real clear uh, the importance of, of manipulating strings. And it's a great starting place for us to, to really kind of under, understand the syntax and how to program in Python. To start out with, we're also continuing to introduce this Spider Interactive Development Environment or Integrated Development Environment, IDE. And uh, I'd like to have my line numbers on, and I think Spider comes default with the line, non, line numbers off. So let's start there. So I go to Tools Preferences, and uh, you can select uh, here several options. I'll go to the editor, and I'm just going to turn on my line numbers and apply that and say OK. Also, Spider automatically puts in a comment, a multi line comment, and multi line comments in Python are with double quotes. So you can see this. Uh, my template says the date at which we created this program and then outputs my username. Uh, that's a little distracting, so I'm going to remove that from our initial working with strings uh, project here. Also notice that the file is called untitled1.py, and so the suffix to all your source codes and all your, your, your programs will be .py, and we haven't saved this code yet, so it, it's called untitled. So let's get started, and then once again, so these double quotes are important in in Python because they allow you to do multi-line uh, comments. And commenting is real important so that whoever's reading your code, in fact, it would be me and reviewing your code, that you add comments. So that's a, a way to add multi-line comments and a way to, line, to create a single line comment is with a hash mark. And, and what I'm trying to instill here is maybe this is, if you guys follow along with my coding and just follow this video and you can run it speed 1.5 or 2, whatever is, is good for you. If you go through these steps, I think you'll be very prepared for the midterm exam and you'll know Python, Python really well. So I'm going to do a, really a set of short, probably 10 to 15 minute videos and have several of those. And if you follow along, I think you'll come out of the course knowing Python really well and be prepared for your exams. So please follow along. So this is this is a hash mark and you can have several of these in, uh, in a row. And that is a line by line uh, way to comment your code. And so let's start out doing something real simple uh, with, with uh, Python and strings. And I guess I have another note here about just Python and how its syntax is organized around indentations. So for example, if I was to say x equals 12, uh, y is equal to 2, and then I was to tab over and z, say z equals 0, I'll get an error code. And this is another thing about the IDE that's really nice is it tells you that what the error code is while you're writing the code. So it's an unexpected indent. And then in Python, indentations mean something. So we're going to get to writing conditional statements, if else statements, for loops, while loops, and anything in inside of a, of a loop, for example, a for loop would be indented and that code is all blocked together and run together. So our IDE is telling us that that, that tab over or that sp those spaces over is an error. So uh, that's a little about syntax and the importance of syntax. Okay, so let's start uh, working with some strings. So let me just assign a variable and assign has a specific meaning. It, it means in programming languages like Python is that we're gonna assign to the left-handed, the left variable of the variable left of the equal sign, slogan one equals something to the right side. And I'm gonna say Texas, slogan one equals Texas forever. And I'm a fan of Friday Night Lights football. And so that's a slogan from Friday Night Lights, uh, the series many years ago. And then slogan two is uh, something that we all know is Giga Maggie's. And let's just start with this as our set of, of messages and strings. So slogan one is the first variable and it's assigns to the variable slogan one, the string Texas forever. Okay, slogan two is Giga Maggie's. And what we're gonna do with our first ex exercise here First example is to just add those together or concatenate them together. We're going to concatenate two strings. So let's call it slogan three is equal to slogan one plus. And then I'm going to add a space in here. So I've created another string, which is just a space. And strings go in between the, sing the double quotes or a single quote. I like to be consistent and try to use 
double quotes on the outside and a single quote for anything in between. And we see we have a single quote right there in, in our code. So let me just keep concatenating these together. So slogan three is equal to slogan one plus a space plus slogan two. Now, when we were, we're going to um, print the results out so that we can see it on the console in your lower right hand corner here. And so let's use the built in function called print. And I'll just print out slogan three and let's run this code and see the results. So we can see it says Texas forever, Giga Maggie's, and also notice that in our uh, variable explorer, the variable showed up. We can click on this and we can see that that's Texas forever and the type of the variable is a string and um, so forth. So this all appeared on one line because it concatenated it in. Now, there is also a set of escape codes and this is called an escape code when you have a backslash and then an end that has a specific meaning to do a carriage return. And so if I was to rerun that, we can see that Texas forever is on the first line, there's a carriage return, and then Giga Maggie's. And so there's a whole set of carriage returns. So we could even do a tab here, which would be the tab over. So um, we've we've started out, we've assigned a var variable, we printed it out, and well, we've then concatenated and then we printed it out. So that's that's a really good starting place. Now let's do some other things. There's a lot of built-in functions to work on strings. And in this case, let's do this. Let's do, let's take uh, slogan three. And we want to find a specific thing in the string itself. And I want to find the location of the exclamation point. And um, so some details here is that what we've done is we've taken our, our, our object, our variable slogan three, and then we've applied a method, a string method to that. And um, you can notice when I hover over the method, and I use method because method and function mean really the same thing, but a method is usually is applied to an object within uh, Python. So we could have had a standalone function, but method, the term method is reserved for a, a function that's applied to an object in the way that we're showing it here in this example. So we can see that this uh, method basically says find in the, in the string um, um, where to start from and then where to end. And this is what what I'm trying to find is this variable sub, and the sub in our case is the exclamation point. So if we were to print this out, we can see that at character, th character 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, by the way, uh, Python starts with zero indexing. So this first character was not one, but zero. So let's, let's, let's show that as well. So we could say before we, we print out uh, where the exclamation point is, is let's say print slogan one character zero. And you can see I put that inside of the the um, uh, square brackets. And then if we print that out, we can see that we've got the T and then 13 for where the uh, exclamation point occurs. So that's a simple example of uh, using a method on a string. Now we could have we could have even done this print and then we'll make an, our own object so a b c d and then find d and if we run that again the, the final output will be d which is character zero one two three d is the third character and we see that we we printed out three here so um, this method or function applies to this variable or the object that is in front of it. And that's a, that's a real important concept in Python. So let's keep going on here. This is getting a little bit long. So let me uh, take those things out and then we'll work a little bit with what's called slicing. And then let me call, comment this, this is slicing. And in Python, what you can do is you can, has a lot a rich environment for slicing uh, arrays and strings and lists. And let's do, let's show a few examples. So if I wanted for slogan one to slice out the characters that were from two to four. And once again, Python zero indexing, meaning that it starts at zero. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to take from character two up to, but not including four. So it's going to be characters two and three that we were going to output. So if we get look at slogan one, zero, one. So we, we expect XA to be the output. So let's run that. And there's the output XA. So that's, uh, slicing and this can get very uh, complex with the uh, type of slicing, slicing you can do. So let's do another example here where we will we will take 
we just want the last variable. And here's a convention or standard within Python is that if you want, you can count backwards. So if we want to get the last character in the string, Texas forever, which we expect to be the exclamation point, we can put in a negative one and run that. And then we can see the output is a negative one in our console over here. So let's do a, a few few more things. Let's say if we wanted to, and this is a little bit, gets to be a little bit tricky, and that now if we wanted to print slogan one and we wanted to print everything up to the last character, we could say, use the uh, colon to say from the beginning and then up to the last, uh, let me make sure I put a colon, not a semicolon, there's a colon, up to the last uh, character, one, the last negative one, that would give us everything except for the exclamation point because we're zero indexing and we're going up to the last character itself. So we'll, we'll run that again and we can see, oh, I have a small error in here and that's nice. We can show that string indices must be integers. I have a, an error and then I put a, a, a comma in there and we remove that comma and rerun that and we can see that we didn't print out, we printed out everything except the exclamation point. So if we wanted to print out everything in, um, in this, and in slogan one, we could do it this way. So that means give me all of the elements in the string, each element being a character. Okay, so let's keep going, showing some of the functionality here. Let's uh, kind of make this a little bit simpler, remove that section of code. And what I'll do here is I'm gonna print slogan one and I'm gonna replace, uh, use the replace method and I want to replace Texas with, with Texas Aggies. And let's do that. In our code. So here's another example. And uh, as I'm writing the code, the IDE basically says, gives an outputs an error to show if your code as you're writing it is, is incorrect. So that's that's all that I had a, a quote that was missing and I, I went ahead and put it in. So if I run this, I'm going to replace place Texas with Texas Aggies. And now the output should say Texas Aggies forever. Okay, uh, we got an, an error, unexpected end of file while parsing. So if we come back here, and this is kind of a good troubleshooting technique, you can see that if I place my cursor on the parentheses, that it gives the indication of the corresponding uh, left side parentheses. So I'm missing a parentheses and I add that in and now uh, all our parentheses and closures are complete. I can run this again and we can see Texas Aggies forever. Okay, let's keep turning through some of these examples. Now you can also um, use built-in functions and this will be a good example of what a boolean is in a conditional, I can say print Aggies and use the use the built-in function in in and slogan two. And what the expected output here is either a true or false. Is the is the character string Aggies in slogan two is what we're asking Python to tell us. We run that again, and we can see we output a true. So um, this true output is not a string. In this case, it's called a Boolean. It's either true or false. So if we, if we misspelled Aggies and um, added an S, it would output a false. So that uh, is an introduction, quick introduction to using a built-in built -in function called in, and then also uh, to a Boolean type, data type. And uh, let's keep going here with a few other uh, capabilities and we're going to create a new slogan and we're going to assign new slogan to slogan one and but in this case we want to use a, a function called uh, upper to to make everything uppercase and then let's print that out go through here and now we've 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 uh, output Texas forever and uppercase now how do we understand and how do we find all the different methods or functions that can be applied to a string. So uh, you could do this in a couple of ways. Uh, so if we if we had slogan one and then I put a dot and then I did an autocomplete slogan one um, let's see how was the best way to show this and then with um, I started to put slogan one which is a string and then I apply uh, I, I hit the tab and it shows the autocomplete. So these are all the functions that could be applied to a, the string object that I've created. So for example, if we wanted to uh, do something, uh, let's you know show the, 
the, uh, the upper function that we just ran. I, I can just select that and then include the parentheses, which means run the, the method or function itself. Then we've implemented or instantiated uh, that function uh, on to the slogan one string. So that's one way to find all of them. I actually like to use the console and then uh, you could print out for a specific type of object what are all the methods that could be applied to slogan one by typing directory slogan one? And you can see that it prints out all of the things. Now these, these are built in functions that are used uh, behind the scenes in all the string methods and functions, these double underscore, and they're called dunders in, in Python. So ignore those and look at the other functions. And so if I wanted to have, uh, I wanted to get more information, I could do directory uh, slogan one, dot split is one of the uh, is the functions and it would tell me what is all within the split within this this the split function itself and also you can do help so let's do help on the object itself slogan one and then split and you can see from this that it lists out a long it lists out the the built-in function for the help um, for the function split. So split um, has two, two inputs. And we see none in the help means that, that there, it's not required uh, as an input. And, and in this case, the method is a built-in string instance, returns a list of the words in the string using the separator as the delimiter string. So let, let's uh, try that here in just uh, a minute. So if we, if we applied uh, split to slogan one, we could say print slogan one and we want to split use the split function and we want to use as our separator our delimiter the a space we could do that and then what what is going to be the output and it output a list of two strings that were split so it split texas forever into a list called texas comma forever so this is you can think of this as an array of strings so um, if we were to assign, and we'll talk in detail about list, and so we were assigned uh, my list as, uh, as a variable name to slogan one dot split. We can see that, uh, and we gotta make sure we have the space in there, but that's where it's splitting. And then we were to print my list. Now we have, we printed out the list for this print call and then we assigned the variable to my list and then it printed out the list as well. So we can see that we've got two words or two character strings, sets of character strings in this list uh, variable. So those are a few things that we can do uh, with manipulating strings and, and uh, you'll be working through a, a assignment where you use a lot of these functions. So let's do a couple of other things that are important with strings and often you might want to format your output and I'm going to introduce you to the concept of an F string. So let's create a variable called age equal 21. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say print F and this is uh, called an F string in um, Python. And then what I'm going to output is I'm going to output that variable called age, which is an integer within the string that I've just created. So if we put, if we insert the variable name inside of these brackets, and use this F string, it will then output uh, 21 into my string. So let's just go ahead and do that. So let's uh, delete some of this so we can make it a little clearer. And then we output that seniors. Oh, I've, I've misspelled seniors. Yeah, let's do that again. Seniors are often 21 years old. So that's uh, an example of using an F string. There's a couple of ways to do this. Let's go ahead and say print seniors are often and then what we will do is put a space in there and then we'll put, um, let's call it, and this is, this is a, a function within, with, within Python called str, which cast the integer variable age, because it's an integer into a string. So it can concatenate it with other strings. So if you tried to put just age in there, and we'll just do that, we'll get an error in just a second. So we will put age and we'll say cast it into a string and then uh, concatenate that with the rest of the string. So if we output this, 
the last line of the code is seniors are often 20 years of age. So if I just tried to, to take age and assign that, uh, to include that, we're going to get an error. It can only concatenate strings, not ints. And if we go back to our variable explorer, we can see that age is a data type of int. And so that uh, shows you how we can we can um, insert an integer, uh, maybe that you want to output from your program, into a print statement so that uh, you can report it or debug in your program. So let's do a couple other things here. I'm going to use in a, a built-in function round that I often use in, in my code to output variables. So for example, if I was to say, uh, let's go ahead and say, I'm going to create a variable called my pi is equal to 3.14159. And then, I think I get that right, 3.14159 is my pi. And then if I print rounded to two, to two decimals, we could then say string, use the built-in function string with the built-in function round, my pi to two. Now notice my pi is no longer an integer. It's, it's called a float, it's floating point because it has a decimal. And then uh, I do have an error code here. It's telling me that I've got the invalid syntax. So what have I done wrong? I look at my code here and check my different uh, parentheses, that all looks good. I'm sure that you guys have already found it. I have, did not properly concatenate using the plus sign and, and the editor found that while I was coding. So if we run this, we can see that the output, and I forgot to, let's just go ahead and eliminate that. So it throws an error in the output. Now when we run this code, the last line of code is print, print out rounded to two decimals. I'm going to get better at typing correctly. And we run that again. You can see now, okay, it output my incorrect spelling here. And then finally, I got it right with rounded to two decimals at 3.14. If we don't include the rounded statement, and notice I uh, converted that result of the round function in the, in the string function. So I can um, apply string to the output of uh, the round as round function as well. So let's run this again. Uh, string. Argument two must be string, not an int. Okay, so really what I didn't, that was left over from my round. Let's test that again. And we can see now it prints out all of all of the uh, digits after the decimal place if I don't use the round. So that's an example of using the round function. And then I've introduced the idea of a list, and, but let me show you also that you can concatenate uh, elements of a list. So if I, if I created a list, and we'll call these lists as this list courses equal, and then I use the square back brackets, and I say engineering is first element in my courses list, and then uh, history, and let's say art, and that becomes my new list, and then I can concatenate these by saying print courses zero plus courses one plus courses two. Now what's going to happen is that all of these will be printed together without being separated by a, a space. So let's just go ahead and do that. And we can see engineering, history, art are all put together. And if we wanted to add, uh, once again, a space in between one of these, we just concatenate in um, we concatenate in the space itself, and now we can output that. And we can see that entering history and art. So that's a little bit of a manip manipulation, showing how you can manipulate strings and list and combine them together. Okay, finally here, we will do this uh, in future projects and examples, is we will manipulate files using strings. So let me do something... And this will be clear in the example. So I'll say file prefix is equal to the path in my uh, on my computer. And what my path is pretty straightforward. I've got the C directory, and then I've got John, for example. And then I may have a file called data underscore one dot CSV. And that's going to include, include all the data that I want to analyze. 
And but I've got another file called data2.csv, and I want to put these in a loop, and then I want to, to read each file and then append the data from file one called data data one to file two, which is data two. How would I do that? So I would manipulate the strings and then use a read file command within Python. But to do that, we need to do string manipulation. So what I would do is I would say, here is my file prefix. And then now I want to create a file suffix, a variable called suffix. And these are dot comma separated variable value of files dot CSV files. And then if I wanted to create file string one, I would take my file prefix plus file data one. I'll add that to one, I'll concatenate that to one, and then I'll add the suffix. And so now I've got file string one, and for my next file, it will have this kind of structure. And let's call this file string two equal file prefix plus two plus file suffix. So file prefix and suffix are changing and uh, the data file, uh, which is defined by the string one and two is being changed. And we'll show how to put this in the loop in the future, but this is basically the, the concept we'll use to, to manipulate files and read in a long number of files into our program. So let's do, let's end this by doing by showing how we can help with that. So if I come over to my console, we can see that the first file name is, or the path to my file name is C colon backslash John backslash data one CSV. And then the second file is going to be C colon backslash John data underscore two dot CSV. Okay. That was a introduction to working with strings and um, the next for the next, uh, uh, exercise will be looking at some other fundamental elements of programming and working in Python, and I look forward to that. Thank you.